Morning, it's just after eight o'clock. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today it's gonna to be busy. Um, not just as busy as I expected it to be yesterday. Um, so yesterday, two jobs phoned in. One is a 160 high track. Um, basically, you've got four big heavy bolts that hold the counterweight onto the frame of the machine. Um, two have come slack. One's completely missing and the other one has snapped off. Um, so that's gonna be some sort of a job to get that broken bolt out. Um, I can't mind how wide the, or how big the thread size is, but to give you a kind of idea, it's a 52 mil spanner. Um, so the big heavy bolts like. Um, so there's that to do. And then uh, not long after that, there's a 140 LCR working on a site out west. So the 160 with the broken bolts is east and the 140 with the add blue fault is west. Um, both jobs could be a sort of hours work or could be an all day ordeal. Um, and it would just be the case that if I put a whole day aside to go to the one with the broken bolts, the broken bolt would just wind out with a chap of a hammer. Um, but if I try and squeeze both of them in, both jobs have the potential to take up most of the day. Um, so I spoke to my boss yesterday afternoon and told him what the crack was and I said look I know it's short notice if you've got anybody available I'd appreciate the help um, and uh, yeah he got something organised for me so there's a lad coming through uh, to pick up the new bolts that I ordered they should be in for nine o'clock this morning uh, he's going to gather them up and head east for that job and uh, I'm gonna head west and do this at Blue Fault. Um, I have got two or three other jobs out west sort of um, on the just passing list, so I've just gathered up parts for them. And uh, yeah, if, if, it, if it does turn into a job where it's just an hour's work, then I've got uh, other work in that area that I can fill the rest of the day with. So um, yeah, either way, we'll be busy, we'll be busy. So, I'm gonna uh, head out west. I mean, Carlisle at the minute, I don't know if anybody lives in Carlisle, but I don't think there's a single road that takes you out of Carlisle that hasn't got temporary traffic lights on or a road closed. It is absolute torture at the minute. Um, so I've just come from home, which is sort of on the outskirts of Carlisle, into the yard there, um, through Carlisle. And normally, you'd expect about 10 minutes tops to get through Carlisle. Um, and it took 22 minutes this morning uh, and I've got to get back out of Carlisle as well now so yeah a bit of a carry on at the moment like they just seem to schedule out roadworks for the same week in February at the minute um, so it's a pain right I'll uh, I'll catch it my first job and uh, hopefully there'll be two or three jobs seen too by the end of the day Right, 140 LCR. Um, I think the fault code, I'll check when I put the laptop on it, is uh, conversion, emissions conversion law. So basically what it's saying is the machine has noticed that the emissions have been treated uh, properly. Um, so it it's a tricky code to kind of, or it can be a tricky code to get to the bottom of because it's not necessarily, um, Sort of pointing towards a component failure. Um, I'm going to put the laptop on it, see if there's any historic codes for any sensors, um, and then I'll pull the exhaust cover off and have a look at the ad blue injector. But first things first, I'll check the ad blue for concentration and uh, for any contaminants. So that's first. So there's lots of deucing equipment here. There's the 340 look. There's a six tonner there, and uh, a 140 LCR-3 as well. That's a machine to set off with. Um, put my laptop on it. I've got two current error codes, or uh, these, what they call these, but the um, events, two events. Uh, we've got the inducement code, and this is the code that's brought on the inducement. So it's catalyst conversion efficiency law. Um, so I'll have a look at the troubleshooting guide for it, but 
like I say, first I'm just going to go and check the uh, AdBlue concentration. You can see the AdBlue concentration there is high. If you look below where the 35 is, there's a flat line between 30 and 35. That's where it wants to be sat. So we've got high concentration. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, drain the AdBlue out. I've drained the tank, the bung's sort of down in that bottom corner there. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll, with the bung out, I'll throw a fresh drum of Ad Blue in there, not a full drum, just sort of three or four litres just to try and flush it through a bit. And then I'll take the exhaust cover, I'll pull the injector out, and I'll sort of cycle some Ad Blue through the lines as well. So the exhaust cover off it now. Pull the Ad Blue injector out. Um, this could also cause the fault. We've got a little bit of urea build up on the tip, which to be fair, isn't too unusual, but if I try and get my camera into the hole here, just bear with us. See the hole has closed up. That should be the same diameter hole all the way through. Now what could cause that is if the add blue injector the spray pattern um, isn't correct and when it sprays it dribbles off at the end and that'll slowly build up urea crystals and eventually close up the hole um, and obviously that won't treat the emissions correctly. The Perkins machine it's constantly circulating add blue through the injector um, whether it's spraying or not and that's to keep the add blue injector cool so if that injector is stuck open slightly there's a chance that add blue will be dribbling through into the exhaust and blocking the mixer tube up um, so what i'll do is i'll clean that hole up and uh, we'll first thing we'll do is we'll do an add blue injector spray test it'll dose out so much add blue over a certain amount of time and you measure it uh, but that also gives us a chance to look at the spray pattern of the injector Right, it's a bit tight for you to see, but look at the injector. It's a nice clean spray pattern. Um, so it's not even dribbling off at the end. So I'm happy that that injector is okay. Um, and that's just sort of built up over the last 7,000 hours or so. Uh, so I'll let it run its cycle and that'll also sort of, um, it'll, flush the system a little bit and um, we'll fit that back in and we'll take these pipes off and flush the system a bit more so I think it's probably a combination of the AdBlue concentration being high and that injector tube just being a bit uh, corroded up so yeah it's not looking too bad at the moment so everything's put back together. I purged the Ad Blue tank, um, so I run a load of stuff out of it uh, through our lines, make sure everything is got the fresh stuff running through it as best I can. Um, so what I'm going to do now, once it's finished its auto warm up, we'll warm the machine up. To, I think it needs to be about 60 degrees. We'll do this after treatment system function test. That'll run the machine up. It'll basically do a burnout. Um, and it'll do sad blue and it'll probably clear the error code and it'll revert back to normal um, the issue that I don't like with these, this particular error code is it's about a week's worth of working before it'll throw the error code on again so um, you know we won't fully know if we've cured it but what I've done there is sort of the basics really check the add blue concentration it was out of spec that could cause that fault so i've replaced the add blue uh, pulling that injector out and seeing that injector hole sort of closed up again that would cause uh, sort of a conversion rate you should see fault as well so it's all stuff that we've done without sort of throwing parts in um, other factors could be that the mixer tube where the add blue is dosed into it could be choked up with crystallised add blue. Um, I did have a poke around in there, I couldn't feel anything but once we've got rid of the cords we'll do uh, basically a burn out a couple of times and we'll try and burn any deposits in the mixer tube and SCR. We'll try and burn all that out of it um, and then we'll give it 
back to the driver to have a go and see how we go. Um, yeah, another fault could be the knock sensors not reading correctly or the NH3 sensor not reading correctly. There's no historic codes to suggest that there's any issues with the AdBlue sensors, the knock sensors and H3 sensors. Um, the AdBlue pressure appears to be okay and stable so yeah hopefully it's as straightforward as that. This machine's done 7,300 hours. I've known this machine since brand new um, and I can tell you it's had four issues. One was a pilot cut off solenoid, one was an NH3 sensor which you can see it's had a tail flap on. What else has there been? I think early on it had a oil leak um, and there was a broken wire to the EGR temperature sensor. So four problems with it in 7,300 hours. It's not bad like is it? Um, and they've all been sorted so yeah. Right, it's finished its auto warm up. I'll uh, try and do this after treatment test now. Right, there we go. All faults have cleared. Um, so I'm going to clear off to the next job while I'm out this way. I like this run. It's going to be busy on this site, I think. So um, yeah, we'll we'll know soon enough whether or not we've uh, still got issues with it. So I'll I'll catch you at the next one. The next one's another one of these two three. Uh, 140 LCRs. So, only 15 minutes away. Right, if you remember back, um, how far back was it? A couple of weeks ago, um, I was on site servicing this 14 tonner and an 8 tonner. Um, this 14 tonner, I noticed an oil leak up on top of here, I suspected. Um, so, I've actually got a new rubber pipe um, which I'm going to fit and some new Jubilee clips um, and yeah the customer said just when you're next out this area just call in and fire it on so here we are so I'm not sure what kind of a job it'll be I think I'm gonna have to take I'd probably prefer a bit of space to be in and about it then I don't lose my trial so I'll take this cover off and maybe this one as well uh, yeah Hopefully I won't make too much of a mess. Right, I'm at the point now where I'm ready to make a big mess. Um, what I'd like to happen is that pipe there, lift that up, pull the whole lot back, put a bung in there quickly, put a bung in there quickly, um, and not lose any oil or much. Uh, realistically what's going to happen is I'm going to get that pipe lifted up off there, the oil's going to run out the valve chest and I'm going to fight on trying to get this rubber pipe over the ribs that are on the uh, two metal pipes here. That's probably what's actually going to happen but I will see, I've got everything moving, that's loose. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to struggle getting this on, there's not much flex in that. Because what I thought about doing was pushing the pipe that way, lifting it up and pulling it towards me and keeping that in situ. But when I felt how stiff this pipe is, um, I'll either struggle getting it off doing it that way or I'll struggle getting the new one back on that way. So Give it a go, look. So far, so good. I was worried uh, this would just run forever and a day, but it doesn't appear to be coming up there, so that's a result like what I'll do is I'll put a clean rag over the top of that hole uh, like that I'll pull this off that's the o-ring off it there I've got a fresh one in that bag down there which I'll obviously fit to it while I've got it off so this is going really well and um, that pipe slid over there nicely I thought I was gonna have to sort of batter that end with a, a hammer or something um, that's gone on really nicely. I've just put my new o-ring into here. I've cleaned everything off. With a bit of luck, I'll get that. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. Need a bit of encouragement. There we go. That's somewhere near now. I'll remove this rag and uh, run the Allen studs back into the valve chest. Yeah, I reckon I haven't even lost a cup full of oil here, like. Great success. Right, we're winning. Everything's in place. Um, when you put 
Jubilee clips on like this where you've got space for two but one at the top and one at the bottom because obviously when it comes round there's a chance it'll sort of look like that rather than like that so you kind of tip it upside down and do the same on the other side if that makes sense but uh, yeah everything's dry in there now I've given it a good scoosh off with brake cleaner yeah, we'll put it back together uh, and uh, get on to the next job. There's uh, one more job to look at with this 140 LCR. Um, occasionally the fan speed has been sort of revving flat out because it's got a viscous fan on it. Um, the fan will or can have the ability to rev harder or less depending on coolant temperature, hydraulic temperature, etc. Um, and what the customers noticed is that all of a sudden the fan speed will rev up and it'll put an engine management light on it. When it goes into the service menu to look at the real-time failure codes, although there's an engine management light and it's flashing, there's nothing in the real-time codes. Um, but when I look onto my Perkins tool, you can see that it has been recorded. It's actually happened 208 times. That's the first instance of it happening and that's the second instance of it happening. And the uh, engine fan clutch output device driver current below normal. Um, yeah, I'll just inspect the wiring uh, going to the viscous fan, but chances are it'll be the sort of speed sensor doodary thing. The good thing is, is that if you were to unplug the fan altogether, um, the fan will actually default to max position, so max cooling, um, which means that if you lost power to it or cut the wire to it or something happened, default position is max cooling, so it uh, the machine won't overheat, you can kind of carry on. Um, what could cause that? Well. This machine has got the same fan hub assembly on it that we replaced on Tuesday. Um, so you can imagine if that fan hub assembly is wobbling about, uh, that could cause problems. So I'll knock the machine off now um, and just go and check all the fan bearings and just inspect the wiring. So I've just had the fan belt slackened um, I was thinking that I'm sure I checked this fan bearing quite often I'll do it for machines that I haven't seen for a while um, and I thought I'd just check this one on the service I'm sure I did anyway I've slackened the fan belt off there's no play whatsoever in the bearing itself so that's good um, just checking the wire and this this wire here is what's feeding your viscous fan so this is like a, a rotary coupling type of ID. You can see it's spinning on the shaft there. Um, when the fan belt was slackened, I could turn the fan, obviously with the hub all the way around. There was no tight spot on it. There is a little bit of lateral play in it. Um, and whether that's enough to kind of uh, sort of break the circuit because it's a current below normal, um, I'm not too sure. Normally when I get issues with these it's the speed sensor. It doesn't know what speed it's doing, so the ECU defaults it to flat out to protect the en <coughs> to protect the engine. Um, but you can see if I I can turn this fan, and the shaft itself isn't spinning, and that's the idea of it. It'll kind of uh, viscous fan. It'll kind of uh, what's the word? It, it alters fins inside. I think and you've got oil inside there so if you have your fins like that that's it fully engaged and the more the fins turn like that the more oil is allowed to pass by the fins to the point where it's just you'll never get it to actually stop but it'll just kind of be sort of idling and you'll find that it doesn't the the fan speed doesn't actually match the engine rpm the idea of that is for um fuel consumption more than out else because the engine hasn't got to turn that fan all the time and it doesn't need to it uses less fuel um, and then obviously when things start to heat up it'll 
engage itself a bit more, cool down what it needs to, and then it'll sort of revert back to sort of its idling state. Like I say, it is always going round, um, but yeah, fuel consumption. Anyway, I'm gonna check out why I'm in here, give that plug a look over. I've not really had any issues with these plugs, so um, I'd be surprised if there is out wrong, but uh, yeah, I'll have a look. If I notice out, I'll show you. Right, uh, I've just been on the phone, uh, next job is um, on the way back through to Carlisle. This job came in yesterday, um, he said no panic, just sort of when you're passing or when you're in the area. So I was sort of thinking it'd be sort of middle of next week, but as I'm out this way today, um, I thought on and I grabbed some bits this morning. Job is a DX10 fuel gauge won't work, so you can well imagine I've already got the bits in stock because I got those, uh, I got that level sensor um, for that job down the road um, and I've also got a fuel level gauge um, which we had in stock so I'm sort of fully armed with either or um, and then whatever I don't use I'll, or whatever I use I'll reorder um, because I will be down South Cumbria uh, at the start of next week. So as long as as long as long all of a sudden there's no stock of these blooming level sensors, then uh, yeah, we should be all right. Okay, I'm just talking for the sake of talking. I'm trying to reverse out of this yard and there's timber everywhere, so I'll, uh, I better just concentrate. So a DX10 fuel level uh, is it correct. Turn the ignition on. Showing full. Tank is empty. But I can see the float. You can't, but I can. I can see the float stuck. So anyway, we'll pull it out and see what we're doing. Right. More like it. Another job jobbed. So that's another job uh, seen to, another one knocked off the list. Um, next one now, I'm gonna squeeze in, it's only half two. Get back through to Carlisle and there's a six ton Mechlac dumper. Um, I think I've shown you in the past, but the engine oil pressure sensors uh, on the six to nine ton dumpers, there's a rework out for them. So um, I've got a rework to do on, there's a machine in Carlisle basically, um, and it's to do so. I'll go and grab that one and knock that one off the list of jobs to do um, and then get back through at the yard, load up for tomorrow. I've got an oil leak on a five and a half tonner up towards Edinburgh tomorrow, which is annoying because when I was at that 160 high track uh, on, was it yesterday I was at it? No, the day before. Yeah, the day before on Tuesday, um, I was only 20 minutes, half an hour away from Edinburgh. So I'll go up there and get that one seen to in the morning and then hopefully I'll get back down to Carlisle for lunchtime and uh, there's a 20 ton of working in Carlisle uh, with a couple of jobs to do to it. So it's all looking good, it's all looking good. Right, possibly the last job of the day at Dumper, we'll see. Um, we're back down in Carlisle now, or crossing Carlisle compared to where I've been. Um, yeah, we've just got this engine oil pressure switch to change. Should be a five minute job. He also asked if I would um, nip up the handbrake while I was here, so I think that's just a two minute job as well. So this is the offending article. Um, oh, that's the, meant to be the improved one. This one actually doesn't look to be leaking, but you've seen me change a few. It's clean, see? Um, you've seen me change a few in the past and uh, yeah they've revised the design or made them stronger whatever they've done but uh, yeah it's to be changed even though at the moment it doesn't look like there's out wrong with it so yeah I'll uh, I'll get this changed out and then I'll work out how to adjust the uh, handbrake. I don't think I've done one of, the, one of these yet. That's the new one on. Well I'll go get this handbrake now. Go over here. Um, oh, 
Let's have a look. Is it one of those ones you can just screw this handle? I think it might be. Let's see if we can screw that. I'll have a go at that anyway. Uh, it doesn't adjust there. Uh, it didn't feel like it was adjusting. So I've been under here with my 213mm spanners. Uh, adjusting it. And it's all adjusted up now. I just need to make sure I've got the lock nuts nipped up. Can you see those two shiny nuts there? <laughs> I just need to lock them off now. And uh, jobs are good. Un. But uh, yeah. Please, it's dry today, look. Oh, we're rattling through the jobs today, rattling through them. Um, it's actually turned into a really, really productive day. Um, so yeah, that, well, I think today kind of demonstrates sort of how I work jobs, if you like. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of gather up a few just passing jobs and, you know, Ideally, they want to be just passing, but if they kind of go on for too long, you get back in touch with the customer and say, look, I haven't been passed, but I haven't forgotten, do you want a special visit? And, you know, sometimes things change. Yeah, yeah, just come straight out like we need it sorted, or no, no, just keep it on your just passing list. So it's worked out really, really well today. Um, getting out to the first digger got me to the second digger, got me to the third digger, um, and then back through to Carlisle here where I've got one of those pressure switches knocked off my list of pressure switches to change so um yeah that's sort of how i try and work things and it keeps everybody happy as well because obviously you know you're not going you're not spending time going straight to a job to come straight back to base to go in another direction and um, i haven't heard from my man from hq to see how he came on with the um the counterweight bolts and i'm a bit <laughs> reluctant to phone him and see how he's come on because he's probably cursing me um, for not getting out to that job um, yeah I don't like to palm rubbish jobs off onto folk and I give him the option like he could have gone and done me West Cumbria work today for us but uh, yeah <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna phone him now and see what he's uh, see what he's saying but um, yeah I'm gonna head back to the yard it's 10 past 4 uh, load up for tomorrow um, and we'll see you in the morning How's it going? Friday morning. Um, I'm heading to a DX50 or a DX55. I cannot remember which one it is. Um, I'm sort of, what am I? An hour and a half into my journey. Um, so from Carlisle, it's 104 miles, but it takes two hours and 32 minutes to get up here because um, it's all sort of cross country. Um, so I've just stopped for, to get some uh, something to eat because I'm starving like yeah. Uh, um yeah i thought the machine was more sort of edinburgh direction which wouldn't have been too bad it would have been sort of up the motorway you'd be an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes but uh, it's more sort of south edinburgh on the east coast so it sort of changes the roads that you're traveling on so i'm just not right sure really yet if i'll get back down to carlisle and get this dx210 serviced um no great rush for it but it would have been nice just to squeeze it in this afternoon we'll see how the day pans out um, it's got an oil leak and I think uh, one of our other engineers was at it a week or so ago um, with a fault and um, it may need a software update to cure that so I've got that downloaded yesterday evening before I set off so I've got another 55 minutes 37 miles um, and we should be on site and getting a look at this oil leak so I'll point my van in the right direction and uh, I'll catch you up there. All right, I finally made it to my DX55. I was standing here because it's really, really windy. Um, and the wind has caused a little bit of damage. Look. So it literally just happened an hour ago. Got out the cab and the wind took the door out from his hand, swung around and smashed. Look at that look. Anyway, um, oil leak on this digger, he sent me pictures of it yesterday afternoon, so I know where I'm going. Um, it's just on the top of the hydraulic pump. Looks like a 90 degree elbow, uh, directional elbow that you lock off in place. Um, looks like it's loose, so I'll take the cover off uh, the pump area and uh, see what we can see. You can see the oil leaks coming from here. I think it's this directional elbow here that's leaking. So I'll take this pipe off. Check the O-rings okay, generally you'll find the O-rings pinch like so get it off. Right, 
there's the offending article. I don't think this, um, I don't think it's just been tight enough and it's allowed the o-ring to fail. You can see how munched up it is. I'll get that o-ring changed. Um, put it back on, check the levels and then, yeah, I'll check the software version in it too. Well, I can see why it might have been a bit loose. Uh, it's just in an awkward spot just to get a spanner on to nip it up because you can't just get a good bite on it. But, uh, yeah, I'll try and nip it off there now. Put that on there to hold it in position. And that should be okay there. We're not having a good day today. It's 20 to 2 and um, I've just spent the last two hours trying to update the software on that machine um, basically when you go to update it on your um, on your diagnostic cable that talks that connects the laptop to the machine you've got like a toggle switch um, and you flick it to a certain position um, which then puts the vehicle controller into update mode um, so you do that and when you do that, it comes up with EPOS to gauge panel communication error, which is perfectly normal. You then select your software that you want to put into the machine, and um, you're supposed to up. It's supposed to upload the software. It hasn't done, and uh, the machine is stuck in sort of an update mode. Now, there's been all sorts of strange electrical faults of error codes with the machine uh, communication wise and we were wondering whether or not the vehicle controller was faulty so I don't know whether me trying to update it has sort of overloaded the network or overloaded the computer and it's uh, got itself all confused so oh dear I should have just fixed the oil leak and left <laughs> Never mind. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing now is uh, I'm gonna go and meet somebody halfway back down the road. They've got a new VCU, um, and we'll come back up and put it on, and then we'll see whether that VCU needs updating. Love it, absolutely love it. Right. Um, yeah, I'll update you when I get back to this machine or something like that. I need to, um, I need to eat. I'm feeling really, really grumpy. Really grumpy. Right, I've got my box with my new vehicle controller in. Um, I'm gonna, well, there we go. That's where I'm going. Um, the, um, Machine was getting lifted from that site this afternoon, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It means you don't need it. Um, bad thing is it's moved, but I think it's moving a bit closer to where I am just now. So hopefully it won't be an hour and a half back to go and find it. We'll find out. Right, uh, we'll continue on with this disaster of a Friday. <laughs> All right, so the good news is, um, the machine is only half an hour away from where I've had this parts drop. Um, it took me an hour and a half to get to where this parts drop was. The machine is on the back of a wagon and I know the traffic around Edinburgh was savage. Um, so I'd, I've got a feeling I'm gonna turn up here and it's still gonna be on the back of a wagon somewhere and there's every chance that the wagon driver will need to take his 45 minute break and stop for pet stop for diesel we'll see we'll see the day is unfolding i hate this guy so i'm here um i've just pulled up in the yard and there's no sign of a digger but uh fellas just come out to us and told me that the wagon's about 10 minutes away so not a bad thing i can sort of chill for a bit um and yeah, I'll put this on and hopefully the machine will start. And then once I've got it on, I'll have to see what 
software versions inside that and then we might have to do it all again and update it um, and hopefully that doesn't go wrong you do wonder whether or not to just if it's starting and running the machines working just to leave it or whether you should update it and take that chance especially after you've had a VCU go bad on you um, yeah it's a gun it's ooh, I don't know I don't know what I'll do we'll see um, so yeah I like I say the background of the machine is that it throws random communication errors between the VCU and the gauge panel um, the lad that visited it last time um, had a good look over the wire and harness and everything of that couldn't see no wrong with it so what he then did was raised a case with Doosan um, and they said to bring the gauge panel and VC up to the latest software version uh, so when I let me supervisor know that I was heading to this machine and is there out else needing doing with it because I was aware that uh, it had had a bit of a rocky start um, he told us that there was this software update to do so I says oh yeah yeah no bother I'll sort that out <laughs> anyway I'll have something to eat and freshen up and uh, hopefully this machine is just 10 minutes away right that's the new one fitted in there time for the moment of truth now turn the ignition on come on it's Friday please behave Right, we've got error codes, but the machine starts. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. Right, I need to investigate that error code now. I think I know what that error code was. Um, obviously we put a blank, or not a blank, but a sort of standard uh, controller in it so it doesn't know whether or not it's got um, whether or not it's got rotate lines and things like that so that's what the codes were for I think I'll just set everything up and we'll double check right I'm um, just looking at the different versions of software on there I'll just compare that with what I've got downloaded so time is 20 past 6 no more error codes I will be very glad to see the back of that do a thing oh it's been a day like it has putting that new VCU on wasn't just quite as straightforward but Got there, got there. Right, I need to go and find somewhere to eat. I need to go and find some diesel because the van's on red. And then I can point my van home. A late finish. So, as you've just seen, the machine's good to go, and now I'm good to go. What a day it's been like! What an absolute. I hate these sorts of days, I do, you do question why you do the job when you have to, when you have a bit of a performance like that, anyway, it's the weekend, have a good weekend everybody, enjoy yourselves, um, I'll probably reflect on this over the weekend and think to myself next time I need to do a software update. I might think twice about doing it. Hey man. I yeah, right. I I could probably go off on a rant and say something that I'll later regret. So I'm gonna leave the video there. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And uh if anybody knows where the nearest petrol station is, that'd be greatly appreciated. See you on Monday.